I'm back. Thank, thank you very much again. Thank you very much for your patience. My name's Dale Pearce and I'm Principal of the College. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome you here this evening. I want to start by acknowledging that we're meeting on Jarrah Country uh, and uh, my mind is always drawn to, to uh, our local Indigenous people when we gather here in Alumbra, um, uh, the term meaning gather together and the, the connection that uh, we developed through the development of this theatre uh, some five years ago with, with our uh, local Indigenous community and the strength of that is really important to us here at the college. So it's uh, lovely for us to, to recognise that. And uh, as we had a staff meeting on Monday, we were, uh, I suggested to staff that had been, for me, a really um, interesting NAIDOC week that we'd had where there'd been, I thought, uh, just a lifting of the profile of, of the week and then to have that culminate with Ash Barty's win at Wimbledon was just fantastic. So welcome to all of you here this evening. Thank you very much for uh, your understanding of the COVID rules by which we all need to oblige, oblige. Thank you for checking in. Thank you for wearing masks. We'll give you a reminder as we leave about the exit procedures because we need to stage that and uh, Michael Lennon, who's following me, will guide you through that towards the end. So uh, my part in this evening is actually reasonably simple. This is an important information evening for us and hopefully for you. Uh, I don't expect that this will run for much longer than half an hour. We may stretch to 40 minutes or so, and there will be an opportunity for questions at the end. But really, it's about an introduction to the college and an explanation of what happens between here and through to the end of the year. I know that we'll have a mixture of people in here this evening. We'll have students, uh, prospective students, and we'll certainly have parents. And some of you may have a connection with us uh, through, previous, through other members of the family, through children who have been here before. But for many of you, and for probably for most of you, um, this might be your first contact with us. So what we'd like to do is to make sure that when you walk away this evening that you've got an understanding of um, a little bit about what we believe in and uh, how we work as a college, but particularly about <coughs> how our enrolment and subject selection process works, <coughs> excuse me, and how we support um, families and students right through that process, commencing now and right through to the beginning of next year. So, uh, lovely little uh, image of our, of our college behind us. And I want to say that there are a lot of things that have to happen between now and the end of the year. We have a very large open day coming up this Sunday, uh, which is partly here but mainly across the college in our buildings. And we've run that here in the past uh, within this building, but uh, COVID doesn't allow us to do that in terms of um, uh, the density requirements. So we're, we'll be a little more spread out across in our college, which has an added benefit on Sunday at our open day in that you'll get an opportunity to see into some of the classrooms uh, and um, there's, there's certainly a little more space than there would be if we were running it um, here in this facility. But uh, the open day, really on Sunday is about an opportunity for you to talk face to face with members of our staff to ask about particular subjects, particular programs and to help you make decisions about choices for 2022. That's not the only thing that we do in that process and Michael will talk you through some of the things this evening that we do to support uh, families and students in making those decisions and they include the course counselling sessions that are run in the year 7 to 10 colleges and other opportunities that we provide to, to um, families and students coming from other schools. I usually take this opportunity to, to mention students who are coming here from other schools because uh, people outside our, our immediate college community might not be aware that um, Certainly everyone will be aware that we're a large college, we're a very large provider of the VCE and of, and of VCAL, the largest provider in the state, and so we offer immense choice for students, and that can be confusing, which is why we do what we do at this time of the year. But only about 80% of our enrolment comes, comes from our year seven to 10 colleges. Uh, we have significant numbers of students who enrol from other schools within Bendigo and beyond. So. While we can come into the year seven to 10 colleges and work with the teachers there and support advisors in those schools to be giving you information and, and answering questions for you, we're a little more limited in terms of what we can do for students from other schools. 
So if, you, if you're in that category, if you're a, a student and a family here this evening and you're not coming from one of the Bendigo Year 7 to 10 colleges, Open Day on Sunday is really important and it's also really important to understand that we're very happy to sit down with you one on one, one on one and discuss what your needs are and discuss the choices that you need to make. Uh, so if you're in that category, it may well be uh, worthwhile just waiting a few moments at the end of this evening for that question and answer session. So this is almost where I finish. The thing that I'd like you to focus on is way out there in the future. Uh, and I know that's hard to do. I was in a class yesterday uh, looking after a class of Year 12 students and, year, and another class yesterday of Year 11 students and I spoke with them about what their plans were post-school. And I'd say a third of the Year 11s had a really clear idea of what they were going to do. Um, a few more of the Year 12s because it's a little closer for them. But it's hard when you're a Year 10 student or a Year 11 student to be too focused on what's going to happen beyond school. But it is important to have some form of a destination in mind. And the way I usually frame that is that it's most important to complete Year 12. It's the strongest message that I want to give to each and every one of our families and each and every one of our students. Completing Year 12 is so important because all the data that we have available to us and everything that we know ourselves tells us that life opportunities are much better for students who complete Year 12, irrespective of how well they do. Job opportunities improve. Your capacity to earn income improves. The income you earn over your life is going to improve. You'll live a better life. You'll be healthier. You'll live longer. All of those simple things from making the right decisions at this time of your life. And you don't need to, to focus too much on them. But just focus on, one, I'm going to complete Year 12 and I'm going to do that to the very, very best of my ability. So that's the key message I'd like you to take away this evening. Whichever direction you're heading in, whether it's to work, whether it's to university, apprenticeship, whether you're headed to TAFE, whether you're looking to go into some form of traineeship, all of those are really valid destinations because students have got so many different abilities and so many different interests our job is to help you to get to wherever you want to go, whichever of those destinations you want to go to. What I worry about is students who leave school early and go to something that's not going to provide them with ongoing, sustainable employment and good life opportunities. I worry about those students. So again, my key message, come here with the intention of completing and completing to the very, very best of your ability. So what I'm going to do now is to hand across to Michael Lennon, one of our assistant principals, and Michael's going to take you through the rest of this presentation. Thanks for your attention, everybody, and Michael, here you are. Thank you, Dale. And uh, I'd also like to say good evening to everyone, and thank you very much for taking your time to come out tonight and engage with what's a very important step uh, in terms of the smooth transition uh, from Year 10 or Year 11 into our college next year. Sorry, I'm just getting a few clicks up. Uh, our college offers two senior education certificates. So one of the initial uh, starting points in coming to Year 11 or Year 12 is to think about whether you're going to be studying the Victorian Certificate of Education, the VCE, or the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning. We're going to cover in detail both of those certificates tonight. And I want you to really think about you as an individual, uh, the type of learner you are, what you enjoy doing at school, and keeping in mind what Dale mentioned about post-school and what you'd like to do after school. They're all the considerations that we want you um, to go through in terms of choosing a VC or VCAL. We don't want you to think about what your friends are doing or you know, what you might think would be less work. We want you to challenge yourself and make them the most of the opportunities that the college provides by choosing the program that's going to set you up uh, for that pathway after year 12. So when we think about the VCE, the Victorian Certificate of Education, 
we think about uh, university and pathways that it provides um, post-school. So direct entry into university is achieved through the VCE. You can also uh, use the VCE to access the pathways that were on the previous screen that Dale was mentioned. So university is one, it can be work, it can be employment uh, and things. VCE is usually a two-year program with us, year 11 and year 12. Sometimes students will complete the VCE over three years for different reasons, but most of the time it is a two-year program. Students are making the selection over the coming weeks on based on what subjects they would like to do. And each of these subjects is broken up into a unit. So a unit is a package of curriculum material that students study and that curriculum covers certain learning outcomes. Students are required to meet all of those learning outcomes in order to satisfactorily uh, complete that unit. So it's really important when you move into the senior years in education that you are completing all of the set work from your teachers. It's critical that all of that work is completed to cover the breadth and complexity of those subjects and ensure that you're passing all of those units. I didn't think pressing the arrow would be the trickiest part of my presentation tonight, but it's proving that way. What does it take to satisfactorily complete the VCE? So some of these are a lot of detail and things, but if you've had um, past sons or daughters through the college and complete the VCE, you might have a, an understanding of some of these things. But to pass the VCE, you must complete at least three units of English. Two of those three units must be the Year 12 units. In addition to English, students must complete at least three other subjects. In total, it requires 16 units to pass the VCE. Those units might be VCE subjects like PE or maths, but they can also include, and a number of our students include VET, so vocational education and training certificates within their VCE, and they contribute towards that just like other subjects do, and they contribute towards the ATAR at the bottom of the screen there, so the admission ranking to university. So we would uh, complete our enrolment processes online for students and our recommendation requirements for students is to choose five subjects. So English, at least one English and then four other subjects. This time over the next few weeks, either if you're in our seven to 10 government schools working with those schools or coming along to open day this Sunday, Researching and investigating your subject choices at this time of year is really important, vital. All of our broad offerings are available to students at the moment and submitting your enrolment online gives you the opportunity to access any of those subjects. As we progress further through this process and get closer to our uh, transition programs at the end of the year, where students come up and experience a week of classes here or even into next year, the opportunity for change or going back on those choices is a lot more challenging than if we consider our subject choices now. So we really want you to um, think about those subject choices and I'll come to that in a bit more detail in a moment. Our recommendation is five students. A very small number of our students for a range of reasons might look at six subjects. If you are interested in that, you would need to contact the college and apply. The online system allows you to select five. If you'd like a six subject, then we'd ask you to contact us and we can talk to you about that in more detail. So that the VCE, the first offering there, the second certificate, secondary education certificate is a VCAL, so Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning. So the Applied Learning Certificate works in conjunction with a VET subject and that's a compulsory part of VCAL and it can also include some of the VCE subjects as well. We offer the VCAL certificate at two levels. So the majority of our students in Year 11 would do intermediate VCAL 
and then in year 12 doing senior VCAL. VCAL and the Victorian Certificate of Applied Learning is preparing students for further training at TAFE, apprenticeships, traineeships, or moving directly into the workforce. So there's a critical focus on the workplace, understanding the Australian workplace, being work ready, and looking at putting our um, best foot forward at the end of year 12 in terms of building a resume, getting references, and being employable at the end of that year 12. And part of that might include, for many of our students, structured workplace learning. So getting out, being somewhat hands-on in the workplace, spending some time in the industry that you're interested in. At each level, the VCAL has a few more requirements than, in, than VCE, where it's the compulsory part is only English. In VCAL, there's compulsory parts in literacy and numeracy as well as personal development and work-related skills. As I mentioned just before, you are required in a VCAL program to study a VET subject, and then students have the opportunity in our, in our school to uh, study the compulsory subjects plus an additional subject of their choice. This may be one of our applied VCE subjects, or it may be a second VET study within that VCAL program. Those VET studies are a compulsory part of VCAL, but also many of our students in VCE study a VET subject. Really doesn't want me to move on in the slide, sorry. Um, there has been a little bit of communication uh, recently about changes to the senior uh, curriculum. Those changes are staged from now until 2025. So for all of you in year 10 at the moment, the entry into Benigo Senior and the starting of your year 11 next year is no different than it's been in the past. There are no changes for us next year that will impact on your selections at the moment. So a current year 10 student, we are wanting you to consider whether you begin a year 11 VCE program with us or whether you begin an intermediate VCAL program with us. The only slight change on that VCAL pathway is the name on the certificate in two years' time. So currently our Year 12s in VCAL are finishing with a VCAL Senior Certificate. The same program over the next two years will finish with a VCE Vocational Certificate. But the learning experience, the classroom experience, will be very similar for our students over the next two years as it is currently for our Year 11s and Year 12. VET subjects provide a nationally recognised qualification opportunity to get in the workplace. VET subjects are industry-based. They give a really good indication of the training and skills required in those different industries. VET subjects can be a real key part of a student's program, whether they're doing VC or VCAL. And even if you're looking at VCE and tertiary pathways, those VET certificates can contribute. Many of them have their own exam at the end of the year 12 and contribute a score and achievement much in the same way as English and maths and history do. So we really want you to consider the nature of VET programs, have a look at our offerings there and see if there's any of those that align with your post-school destination or your interest. So that covers our VCE and our VCAL certificates as well as those critical subjects in our VET program. I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to talk about our advice and our encouragement for the students in the audience about selecting how to select uh, the program. We want you to consider your capabilities. So thinking about where your strengths are, where your skills have been perhaps in your year nine or your year 10 electives. Think about where your success has been in school. Often that's come with the enjoyment of those subjects and high levels of engagement. I want you to look at your reports and what your teachers have said about your capabilities in those subjects. That enjoyment is a really critical factor. I talk to students in my role, uh, as Dale mentioned, as an assistant principal here at the school, a lot of the time about subjects perhaps that they're not enjoying. And quite a number of times we unpack how that sort of came about. 
and quite often it's been about friends or what other people have told them that they would enjoy and things. Perhaps what their friends have said to them that they would enjoy. I want you to talk to the people that really know you best in terms of classroom and learning. So your current teachers, the people that you brought here tonight. I know many teenagers think perhaps that their parents don't have a good idea all the time of what they enjoy and what they're good at, but they do. They have known you for quite a number of years. I'm sure they could offer some advice and and have some conversations about those successful subjects. You do need to, at this point, for some of these options post-school, think about the tertiary requirements. Some of the pathways to university and things require certain subjects to be studied and some of those do need to begin from the start of year 11. So if you do have particular ideas around university courses and degrees you might be interested in, please talk to Careers and Pathways support at your school or contact us. Have a careers meeting about those and see what those prerequisites, what subjects you need to do or perhaps what subjects are beneficial. It'd be great for you to look at those subjects and explore that learning with us before you commit to perhaps a three or four year degree after school to get a bit of an idea. Some of the resources that we offer in addition to information sessions like this and the work that we're doing on Sunday is we have a couple of uh, guides on our website now. So we'd encourage you to visit our website over the next few months in putting this together. Our program guide is a really intuitive, uh, very easy to use online document that has descriptions and information from all the subject teachers about their subject, about their assessments that you'll be doing in them, about the key skills that they cover. Sometimes we have an idea of a subject based on the name, but perhaps you know, it's not exactly clear of what that means. What will I be doing in systems engineering exactly? The program guide will give you that description there as well. The teachers have put those together. There's helpful hints and ideas. There's also on our website a parent and carer's handbook. So as a parent with a student entering senior curriculum, particularly if this is the first one in the family, there's some really good uh, information in that document for parents and carers to learn about what to expect. Some of the terminology and acronyms that we're you know, uh, known to use all the time. Some of those are explained in those documents. So for students currently at our 7 to 10 college, as Dale mentioned, it takes about 80% of our new students every year. They'll be working through a program with their current teachers that involves them getting online and selecting their program for next year. You will receive instructions and information from your college about that and there's also um, some dates I'll talk about when we're coming out to visit you at your college. We want you to speak to your advisors in those schools and get, uh, get their support in choosing your program. And there's also other resources available for them. For students who are not in one of our 7 to 10 college, our um, support is through our open day this Sunday and also our website. There's an expression of interest which opens next Monday. So if you're not in one of our government 7 to 10 college and looking at enrolment, one of the first steps is to complete an online form, a very basic form, to put an expression of interest for enrolment and then following that form, uh, completing that form will contact you and support you through the online subject selection process as well. Our student engagement coordinators. So we, uh, we work in year levels, but we have a number of uh, coordinators for each year level, being a large college. Those coordinators will be available on Sunday um, for you at the open day. If you're not from one of the 17 colleges and you'd like to sit down with somebody and discuss your course or you have questions about the enrolment process, we'll be in the upper foyer in Alumbra here and we encourage you to come up and talk to one of our coordinators on Sunday. In a moment, I'm just going to demonstrate uh, our online subject uh, enrolment system based on how my ICT skills are going tonight, if I can manage this, I'm sure everyone will be walking away tonight confident of that. But we use a program, a software called Edval, which students select from a list uh, any of the subjects they wish to do. So I'm just going to 
Give that a go, sorry. It's on my screen, but not yours. I could describe it. Wondering if James might be able to help me, sorry. So, as I mentioned, these online systems will connect through the information provided from Year 7 to 10 College. All of our government uh, 7 to 10 College students will have a unique code and they can enter that code and that is keeping all of your family and contact information um, from your current school and saving you entering and providing that to the college. All of that information comes along with you using that unique code. If you're not in our current government schools, then part of that expression of interest will gather some of that information and we'll be able to generate a unique code for you. Thank you, Michael. So in the information provided and on our website is a link um, to this uh, page. And it's as simple as when you're going into here, even the first time you're just entering your unique code. Um, so excuse me while I type mine in. And that unique code, as you can um, perhaps see up in the top right hand corner is identified uh, me and it will with you as well with your unique code. This online system will operate until the 27th of August. We definitely don't want students rushing in. We want you to thoroughly consider your program so there's no preferences, there's no um, disadvantage in terms of submitting your uh, enrolment right up until the 27th or submitting it next week. So once you've worked through a really thorough and considered uh, research into those subjects and we want you to go online but there's certainly no need to rush and do that as soon as it opens on Monday. So it's open for selections for me tonight to demonstrate this. Once I click on that Bendigo Senior I'm presented with two options there for next year for 2022 and all the year 10s in the audience will get the same option so VCE next year or VCAL and based on your selection of those two programs so that's our first choice which program will I be studying? Based on your selection there, the next page is different. So I've just selected to run with a VCE program for next year. The first selection I'm doing is based on English. And if I drop down that menu, I'm only given the English selections there. So I'm choosing whether I'm doing English language or standard English or literature. And then once I've chosen those, that subject, I move to my next choice and then you'll see a very large selection there for our year 11s entering VCE program. So starting from accounting and if I scoot all the way down, all of our VET subjects are at the bottom there as well. This program won't let you continue without an English selection and then four others to, to ensure that you've got a full program there. All of these subjects name coral, uh, all of these subjects correlate to the program guide that I mentioned before and the description of all of these selections and the advice around those subjects are in that guide. So once I've made my English selection and four others, I'll be able to submit that. Once I've submitted that, it will confirm my email address and then email me my selections. If we do that in a couple of weeks' time and then a further conversation comes up in school or something subsequent that means we want to review that, you can go back in and make those changes all the way up until the 27th, ensuring that you submit again and then you'll get another confirmation email that will override the selections from last time. I will hopefully... I don't know whether I'll break it, but I will hopefully be able to go back and, and show you the layout for a VCAL program. So the VCAL has our literacy already selected as a compulsory subject, our personal development. So there's two options there for the same subject. The second one uh, will enable you to enrol in a work readiness program. 
which gives an opportunity for you to perhaps combine some on-the-job uh, work and training there as well. Our numeracy selections. So there's two selections there for Mathematics General and Mathematics Foundation Maths. And we'd encourage you to talk to your current maths teacher about the appropriate selection, whether you're selecting within VCE or whether you're selecting with those two options within VCAL. As we mentioned, VET is a compulsory part, so there's a specific drop down for choosing the VET subject. And then a pathway subject that does enable you to access a second VET, because they'll be in this list as well, or one of the other subjects that we've gone on offer for our VCAL students. A number of our VCAL students enjoy our applied subjects, so applied, applied business management and things, and that's why they um, are conveniently at the top of the menu there. They're very uh, popular with their VCAL students. As we mentioned, this is part of the program and partnerships with our 7 to 10 colleges, so there's lots of information be supported there. Anyone outside those colleges, one of the key aspects you can talk to a coordinator about on Sunday is any support or help. We also have an email address over here on the right, uh, enrolments at bssc.edu.au, and that's a monitored mailbox over the next few months and all the way till the end of the year, actually. If you have any questions or any uh, concerns about this process, you can email us there and we'll get in touch with you with some support. So the things to do, this is a really important start coming along tonight, a critical start, and thank you to the support of parents and carers that have come out tonight to help with this process. We want you to involve your parents and your carers in your conversations about your subjects. Talk to them about your ideas, your thoughts. Also talk to your current Year 10 teachers as well. We want you to carefully consider the choices that you make at the moment. This is your opportunity to look at that range. Following this transition process and certainly at the beginning of next year, the opportunities for those changes are far more limited and in many cases not possible for us to do once the year's begun. That online system, please finalise those selections by the August 27th, but there's no need to rush in terms of the programs. Make sure you investigate those subjects. One of the critical things that we encourage students to do is really finish off quite strongly their Year 10 program. The things you're learning, the habits you're developing around your study and revision are critical for a successful Year 11 and Year 12. So even more so, it's vital that you're making the most of those opportunities to be ready for this program that you're choosing with us next year. In November, at the end of November, we'll have uh, orientation days for students to come along with the 7 to 10 colleges or coming along uh, on those days from our other colleges as well. There will be another parent information session with a lot more detail around the start of the year, around how parents can get involved and support in November. There's a step up program. Our step up program is a week of the classes that you've chosen for next year and it is week one of our 2022 uh, curriculum. So we're beginning week one work. So it's really critical that students are there for that week of step up and start all of those subjects. And we're very kind. We'll give you plenty of holiday homework to take home as well. Not in a show bag, but pretty close. Uh, so the key dates that I've mentioned, some of these already, but we have uh, our open day on Sunday from 11 to 2. As Dale mentioned, we're in the foyer as well as in some of the other areas across the college. The date's uh, later in November there for the parent information session uh, and part of enrolment and the process of our communication will let you know about those dates when we get closer. And then one of the critical ones to have in the family diary would be the Monday 29th to Friday, December 3. That's our full week of classes as well, and they'll be available on our website as we get closer. 
There's a couple of information items there now to continue. I'm probably only a couple of slides away, I'm sorry, but thank you for bearing with me. One of the great new initiatives that has been coming into government schools in the last couple of years has been our Head Start program. So we're really promoting interest at this point about this if you'd like to get involved. Head Start is where students combine learning at school with learning on the job and they're completing school-based apprenticeships in workplaces. So they might be going to the workplace one day or two days a week and coming to school the rest of the time. Part of that accredited training that they're doing in the workplace contributes to their VCE or their VCAL. Uh, and there's Head Start coordinators mentioned there, but if you'd like any information about that, you can check out our website or you can ask some questions tonight at the end. Uh, we find it really important to me mention about the school bus program for students. At this point in time, uh, under the Department of Transport, you are moving schools, so it does require a new application. If you're currently travelling on a school bus and you wish to continue that, the nature of you, even though it's a set-up pathway in Bendigo from 7 to 10 and then to us for Year 11, Year 12, you still need to put in an application for that to secure your seat. And there's some conditions around eligibility. Some of those may change based on uh, the change in school, but we encourage you to uh, uh, contact the Department of Transport or what is a really good option is the transport hub at the marketplace. So one of those little island stalls used to be PTV, going along there and um, getting some support with an application. But please make sure that you're aware of the process of applying again because of the change to a new school. Most importantly um, for students, you know, to really make the most and finish their Year 10 program off as strongly as they can and be as ready in terms of skills, uh, routines and attitudes towards education as best they can by the end of the year. In a moment, I'll just go through uh, our exit procedures in line with the COVID uh, protocols. I'll go through those in a minute, but I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone very much for coming along tonight. We uh, have staff here from Bendigo Senior, uh, my colleagues, and I appreciate them coming out tonight, and we'll be here in the theatre for the next few minutes. So if you have any questions of us, please remain uh, in the auditorium here with us and we can talk to you at the end. Um, but we will uh, leave in sections, if that's okay, uh, to avoid any congestion and things like that. But uh, as you leave tonight, please travel home safely and thank you very much for coming along. I think... Uh